Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagula. Now, the government of Scotland, the nation state in the UK, has been hit by a major crisis with two of the country's best known politicians, the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon and her predecessor Alex Salmond, embroiled in a bitter feud. Once they were very close allies, but now Mr. Salmond and his supporters say Miss Sturgeon conspired against him when he was accused of sexually assaulting nine women. He was later cleared of all charges. Opposition parties say Scotland is facing a crisis of credibility as a result of the feud and because of deepening divisions within the governing SNP party. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Arise correspondent Faith Orr, who is herself Scottish. I so, am indeed. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. This is a case of political intrigue at the very highest levels. Just explain to us what this row is really all about. Well, this started in 2018 when two women went to the Scottish Government. They accused Alex Salmond um, of sexual harassment. It wasn't assault at that time. During his time in office, when he was the First Minister, of course, he was the leader of Scotland between 2007 up until 2014 when the failed independence referendum happened. Now, they said there was a government inquiry at the time. He claimed that the inquiry was carried out unfairly. And actually, the government did admit, yes, it was unfair. He won, I think it was about £500,000 in legal costs at that time. Now, it then went on to a court case. And as you said there, he was cleared of all charges. Now, interestingly, he has since pursued, some would call it a vendetta against Nicola Sturgeon. He says there's a conspiracy. He says that her, her husband, Peter Murrell, numerous other high profile SNP members are trying to eradicate him from public life, even to go so far as they want to put him in prison. Um, he has been shouting about this a lot on his television show on Russia Today. Um, well, that's quite a place to have a television show. He's had it for about three years, I think, um, his Russia Today television show. Uh, interestingly, SNP politicians have just been advised they should not be speaking to Russia Today because it has been taking several negative stories about the party and about Scotland. And of course SNP is the governing party in Scotland. They are indeed, they're the ruling party, they're in government in Scotland. Um, so yeah, this, this does, it stems back to, to 2018 um, and now there is two inquiries underway. There is one that will look in to the government's handling of things and mm. there's one that looks into how Nicola Sturgeon has dealt with all this. It's quite extraordinary. And Mr. Salmon is making some pretty extraordinary claims against Ms. Sturgeon. He alleges that she breached the code that ministers have to abide by. And if that is right, she probably has to resign. I mean, that's pretty serious, isn't it? It is. It actually comes down to a matter of days. Um, initially, she said that she had only heard about these allegations in the 2nd of April 2018. That was her vocal statement. Mm. Then she said in a written statement that actually she had first heard of these allegations in a meeting with one of Salmon's top aides at the time on March the 29th. So it's only a matter of a few days, but because she changed her story, the opposition as well as Salmon say that she is guilty of misleading parliament. She says she simply forgot about the previous meeting, uh, but what does stick in her mind was on the 2nd of April when Alex Salmond was sitting in her home telling her about all of these allegations. Um, so, it, you know, some people would argue, well, it's a few days, she still admitted she heard about it, doesn't mm. matter if it was a few days. The opposition say it does, Salmond says it does. If she is found guilty of ministerial impropriety and of misleading parliament, she will be forced to resign and that will be quite a blow to the ruling party. Well, absolutely. And uh, in terms of how she's seen in Scotland, I mean, she is quite popular, isn't she? Uh, I, I mean, I think her handling of the pandemic, according to opinion polls, has been seen as largely positive in Scotland. Yeah, uh, she is. She's very popular. Um, especially because of the pandemic, Westminster's handling of it has been viewed from Scotland as something of shambolic, mm. whereas she has taken much more, much more comparisons to, for instance, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand. Now, clearly, 
Scotland hasn't done as well as New Zealand, but people do think that she is a steady hand, that she has led the country through the pandemic right. as well as she possibly could. Well, I mean, could. I have to say, I, I've always liked, uh, I've always found her to be a very decisive, very sort of um, clear, unlike what we see in England, for example, <laughs> I mean, a very sort of clearly defined sort of leader there. But this isn't just a row between Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond, is it? I mean, it's, it's increasingly become about the ability of the Scottish Parliament to hold the Scottish government to account. And, and there are many opposition politicians who are worried that, frankly, the, the Scottish Parliament doesn't have the power. There is that. Um, the, the opposition have very much seized on this. Ruth Davidson, who was the former leader of the Conservatives in Scotland, um, she is no longer, but she is sort of de facto because the current leader sits in Westminster. Mm. She has seized on this and she has very much been questioning Nicola Sturgeon. Now, this is a woman who, when Alex Salmond was in power politically, hated him. You know, she wouldn't have done him a favour if she'd been paid to. Well, I have to, to say, a lot of people didn't like Alex <laughs> No. <Alexander. laughs> uh, Nicola Sturgeon is much more popular um, mm. than, than he was. I mean, I've met them both on several occasions, um, professional as, as well as slightly more informal settings. Mm. And Alex Salmon does seem to have changed over the years since since the independence referendum was lost. His, his approach to things oh, seems to have thing, changed quite yeah. a bit. Yes, it does. Um, and you know he does. He is claiming this big conspiracy, including with Nicola Sturgeon's husband. Um, there are accusations that he was pressuring the police to to convict, to charge mm -hmm. Alex Salmond on this. So yes, things things do have changed a lot in Scotland, um, and the opposition are seizing on this because they don't seem. You know, th there is a concern about how much power the Parliament has. The SNP has been in a, a coalition, a majority for many, many years now, mm. and there are questions over the, the Parliament's ability to hold them to account. So, so for people who don't really understand Scotland, uh, as well as perhaps you and I do, uh, how big a threat, how real a threat is this to the whole Scottish Government? Does it seem likely or not that Nicola Sturgeon will be brought down? If the inquiry finds that she has misled Parliament, I, I can't see it will be untenable for her right. to stay. I think that is going to be the problem. But it depends on what the inquiry finds. The inquiry reports mid-March, so we will know by then. And of course, there are the Scottish elections to be held on the 6th of May. Yes. It will be a problem for the SNP if she has to leave post Well, I was going to say, what are the implications potentially for the SNP of carrying all this infighting into that election? There's huge implications. If Nicola Sturgeon is removed from her post, there will be a battle to replace her. Mm. In no uncertain terms, it could spell the end of the SNP in Scotland if that party splits. I mean, she is the popular one. She was with Alex Salmond. The pair of them sort of rose through the ranks together. They are the face of the SNP. Mm. This battle is hugely damaging for the party, for the governing party in Scotland. And he seems absolutely determined to bring her down. Um, the man is very capable. There's every chance that this will happen. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've got about a minute or so because, I mean, you're talking about the if there is a split, there does appear to be a split with, yeah. the, with the SNP party um, about not only how Mr. Salmon has dealt with Miss Sturgeon, but, but also other divisive issues like Scottish independence and, 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 you know, about how Nicola Sturgeon's strategy has been too timid, as some see it, um, not testing the boundaries of the law enough. Yeah, I mean, some people did want her to push for a Catalonia style, we will mm. hold a referendum regardless of whether Westminster allows us to or not. She always said she would never do that. She was going to hold one within the law. She was hoping this election coming up in May will give her enough of a mandate to say to Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, you have no option, you have to give us this vote now. If she goes, Scotland's independence hopes are frankly doomed for the near future. I have to say it's a fascinating story and a real, I mean, made more interesting because you, you understand it very well. Um, Faith, thank you very much indeed. Faith all. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Washington. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.